Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our session today on the impact of digital loan origination on underwriting. My name is Don Gertz, and I am the business development lead at Blank Labs. I'll be your host for today's 30-minute session. Our presenter today is Arash Beral, VP of Product Development at Blank Labs. Arash has over 10 years experience in product development and technology consulting, helping financial institutions and enterprise organizations design and deliver client-centric solutions. Arash and his team are delivering monumental change in digital lending through their continuous innovations that deliver higher levels of human capabilities and attainment. Before Arash begins, we have a few housekeeping items to cover. This presentation is being recorded and will be sent to registrants after the webinar. Please give us your questions. We love answering questions. Enter them in the Zoom chat box and we will answer at the end of the webinar. If you are posting on social media, please use our, use our hashtag, uh, hashtag Blank Labs. We welcome you to follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. This afternoon after the presentation, we will email each attendee a 60 second survey. Please check your inbox because your feedback is most appreciated. And that concludes housekeeping items. Time to turn things over to Arash. Arash. Thanks, Don. Um, so, uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Um, to start, uh, let me um, start with a, a quick analogy on the evolution of writing, and then uh, we get into the actual underwriting and the lending uh, uh, part of the webinar. Um, throughout human history, uh, we see a, a change from in the, within the writing uh, side from using more traditional pen and paper tools um, all the way to then typewriters and uh, more, more and more now digital uh, is becoming a part of um, writing. Uh, we see ob obviously keyboards and now uh, tablets um, and even an augmented way of having more uh, fully uh, digitized and virtual uh, keyboards here. So throughout this uh, history, as we go through it, and as you see, we have uh, evolved the way we write and that has uh, helped us in terms of uh, the efficiency of uh, what we do. Uh, now, uh, to get into the content of um, today's uh, webinar, we're going to talk about uh, four main topics, um, starting with uh, loan origination, the traditional way versus digital, uh, strategic decision-making drivers for adopting digital loan origination, uh, designing a successful digital lending transformation uh, for the organization, and disruptions of fintech and open banking on traditional lending. And then we close with some Q&A. To start with some stats, uh, market size and the opportunity is huge within the uh, lending perspective. Um, the forecast is the uh, volume of uh, uh, lending would be in the loan origination side would be around $100 billion or more by 2020. And there's a lot of room for um, opportunity on the digital side. Uh, customers expect uh, digital loan origination um, and non-banks are offering it, it only 7% of banks can handle loan products digitally from end to end, which shows that a massive market opportunity within the large market size that we uh, already discussed. So underwriting has always been a, a data-driven process and still is, whether within the traditional way or digital. And um, let's look at the traditional loan cycle uh, within this data-driven process. There are six main steps uh, within the traditional loan cycle. Um, as you see in this um, um, page, there are origination, processing, underwriting, servicing, review and renewal, and portfolio management. Um, pen and paper and uh, paper-based um, work on underwriting uh, has always been there and still is, but more and more we see other tools like Excel, Word, PDF uh, being used uh, within all of the different steps of the process, especially within underwriting, review, renewal, and portfolio management. On the servicing side, there has always been the loan book of system, uh, the loan book system that uh, really brings everything together as the formal and official um, uh, book of record for the servicing. Now switching to the digital loan cycle, what we see, again, the steps are not different. We still see the same six steps, but now everything is around the decisioning platform um, and the lending platform. As you see, the data capture uh, within the digital cycle is fully digitized. We can even use some APIs to connect to other partners and interface with them uh, to capture and 
and do the origination part. Uh, processing is also part of the digital aspect through transformation of data uh, from origination to underwriting to have everything ready for them. On the underwriting side, we see the decisioning platform as a centralized uh, data repository and uh, risk rating and reporting uh, mechanism that comes in the middle also interacts still with the other tools like Word, Excel, PDF. So there's, those are still in use, but always uh, interfacing with the decisioning platform, that centralized system. On the servicing side, the decisioning platform through APIs and interfaces connects with the same um, loan book system to be able to leverage the uh, legacy system and the, the existing data that is in the platform and still maintain that formality of uh, uh, booking and uh, keeping uh, the uh, system of uh, the record for the servicing side. On the review and renewal and portfolio management, again, the decisioning platform is center as uh, front and center and is being used by the platform, bringing all the data from the origination and writing stuff uh, steps into the portfolio management steps. And we also see uh, more and more use of predictive analytics in all the different steps of uh, processing, review and renewal and portfolio management to improve the efficiency um, and um, how it, uh, the decision platform works with the rest of the system. To do a quick uh, comparison of these two traditional and digital aspects, uh, so from a data storage perspective, uh, in the traditional way, we have distributed and closed system. Um, in digital world, is very central and integrated with other uh, platforms and partners. Manual aggregation for business uh, intelligence um, is an uh, issue with the traditional and a feature of the traditional uh, loan cycle. Whereas in the digital side, we have an ability to mine data, um, um, an option to truly have an audit trail of everything for compliance enablement. Uh, integration for uh, omni-channel pr presence and providing a unique and uh, um, pretty much uh, uniform user experience for the users and the partners and the whole ecosystem and readiness for open banking. So as you see, digital has a lot of um, advantages over the tra traditional lo loan cycle um, due to all these different factors that we discussed. There are many use cases of uh, digital origination um, and it goes through whether on the personal side, on the commercial lending. So it uh, covers uh, auto, uh, home, commercial, and uh, retail uh, lending. So all of them can be covered uh, through the digital origination um, and there's no uh, shortage of use cases there. The impact of the digital loan origination, uh, really focusing on that centralized data repository for loan underwriting um, is as follows. So on the origination side, uh, the uh, system has within the organization has a web UI for employees to use, underwriters to use. There's a customer UI that the customers can use and the client of the um, organizations can use to see uh, what's happening with their loan and check their status, um, submit any requirements and documentations. And then there's the open banking API uh, that makes it ready for uh, being part of the larger ecosystem. On the decisioning side, digital workflow um, within the web interface, again, allows the users of the platform to go through all the decisioning steps, gather all the documentations, do all the risk calculations, all within one centralized platform. On the fulfillment side, there's integration with legacy loan servicing systems uh, to go through, uh, and, um, um, go through all the requirements for the um, um, lending in terms of compliance. Review and renewal, again, within the data repository side, uh, there's that centralized repository that can be used to bring in all the data that was used in origination and decisioning and uh, maintain data integrity and being able to do uh, right reporting um, and synchronize again with the legacy loan servicing systems. And same with the portfolio management, a very important aspect of it is using that data repository. There's no need for manual uh, aggregation and everything is ready for enhanced and intelligent analytics. So there's a lot of um, uh, benefits to have within the digital loan origination side. Um, and we see that digital really empowers the FIs in lending. In terms of the strategic drivers now, if we see all these benefits and then the question is, then so what and how, what we can do and how we can make that uh, decision to switch to um, digital lending from the more traditional side. Um, I see these five different elements and drivers here. So, um, Digital really enables faster funding decisions. It helps with improving compliance, mitigates the risk. It supports omni-channel and open banking. And most importantly, brings a customer satisfaction and experience and increases it. 
All of this results in uh, profitability, high profitability and book size for the organization and lowering of the operating costs for the company. So again, as we see, um, digital really empowers the files in lending to uh, deliver and bring competitive advantage for them and uh, improve profitability and reduce the operating cost. So now the question might be that, okay, so now I understand the um, benefits of going digital. I know it empowers me and really can be a competitive edge for me, but what is the um, steps to go through this digital transformation? So we have a framework at Blanc Ops that uh, I can describe at a higher level here in terms of this transformation roadmap. We always start with the current state analysis um, and we have to go through the identifying of the workflows, all the systems that are already um, in the system um, and being used within the organization. All the data sources have to be identified. Data storage and how it's being done is gonna be analyzed. Partners should be identified, all the risk models and dependencies. So all of them come together to give, uh, give you a current state analysis. And the second step, um, now we map a future state analysis based on the exactly similar factors of workflow systems, uh, data sources and storage, partners, risk models and dependencies. Um, and we map out that future state for the organization. Based on these two steps, now we have a gap analysis uh, uh, step where we identify all the resources um, that are necessary for, for the transformation, uh, the governance structure that has to be in place, all the partners that have to come through, and uh, vendors that uh, should um, come um, to the picture for this transformation roadmap. Um, all of these are obviously across people process and most importantly technology, which is the next step. So there's a technology analysis that has to happen. All the digital journeys that have to be mapped out for all the users within the system, identifying the data sources, the data storage um, requirements um, in the new world, all the dependencies that have to be um, um, identified and the security and compliance requirements that have to be taken into place and taken into account for um, the analysis of uh, the technological uh, requirements for the transformation. The next step is actually solutioning. So here is where uh, having the right partner, I think is very crucial on the technology side. Um, we have to define um, the minimum viable product or MVP um, for, this is a very um, usually long journey. So really defining what is absolutely necessary to start as opposed to wait for a long time to get to uh, the final, final product. It's very important, important and imperative for the organization to really define that minimum um, set of features and functionalities that are necessary to get started as soon as possible with uh, as minimum of uh, time to market and cost of ownership as possible, and then start adding on top of it. So defining that MVP is very crucial. Um, designing the UX and UI, the user experience and user interface for the platform, architectural design, the software architecture and how it has to uh, sit in within the larger enterprise architecture is very important. The deployment plan, the so what after everything is ready, how to take it from there um, and integrate it within the larger um, organizational uh, infrastructure. The data migration plan, another very important part and massive part that uh, to bring us from our existing infrastructure um, to the new world. The test plan, the training for the staff, um, underwriters and managers who are gonna be using the system and the partners as well. The change management aspect is also very crucial, again, across people, process and technology. And then using agile teams throughout this process of solutioning to get to what we wanna do. And then there's that uh, final step of actual iterative development that goes through the whole design, coding, testing, release, and feedback loop um, to get the organization step-by-step uh, step closer to um, the final state and taking us through this whole transformation roadmap. In terms of uh, overview of um, the infrastructure and uh, how the technological uh, platform would look like, lending systems usually, again, start in a current state with a combination of enterprise data warehouse, the document storage, the loan book of system and the enterprise systems, other um, systems within the company and enterprise that are being used. Um, when we're going through this transformation journey, what's very important is to 
get to um, something that is uh, very much based on this lending platform that is really coming on top of the existing infrastructure. And then um, it's wrapped around the cloud. The cloud can be public or private, depending on uh, um, where the organization is in terms of their uh, technological maturity. But there's a compliant cloud that covers the lending platform and the data around the lending platform. And everything sits on top of the existing infrastructure. So that's the first step of internal origination and underwriting to enable that uh, digital lending step. Then we can add the integration with the digital banking on the web and mobile. As you see, uh, there is this emphasis on uh, microservices to make the organization a, a more services um, infrastructure based versus a monolithic application that covers everything. So all the use cases, what it means in terms of microservices is that as you see all those APIs that sit on top, enable um, the um, organization and the enterprise to um, not only rely on one monolithic application, but be able to internally and externally for multiple functions, such as loan origination, getting the statements and everything, be able to um, do them one by one and be able to easily integrate with any other systems without major dependencies. So that decoupling is very important in a microservices based in, uh, infrastructure and architecture to enable this independence and then connect to web and mobile interfaces for digital banking. Um, the next step would be within the ecosystem to connect to other fintech and partners um, through that uh, layers of API and microservices on top of the existing infrastructure to be able to again connect with the larger ecosystem. And last but not least, there's a future state of integration with AI engines for uh, predictive analytics that is also a very important aspect of uh, this uh, digital transformation and enables more and more competitive advantage. So that was uh, the, I guess, the journey of the organization that how we see it with this framework of going through these multiple steps and then how to actually enable that and develop and, uh, and bring it to um, the live uh, system and going through the transformation. Now let's talk about the opportunities and threats uh, within this um, domain and landscape the way we see it. So there are two major uh, threats that are coming from um, other fintech and also open banking, and let's talk about them. So in the open data world, which is uh, what all regulators, uh, regulators are working on, uh, it, defining its standards for North America right now, it's more mature in Europe, but also it's happening in North America. So it's, it is the future of uh, banking and finance and lending as well. We see fintechs as uh, the companies who are coming in to disrupt the mar market, they will be enabled to originate loans uh, directly. Um, they are the early adopters that will drop the brokers and will disrupt them. And uh, they will require a, a high cost or slow adoption um, to come into this uh, new world. So we see them as something that uh, the current lenders and the incumbents have to either partner with or be able to uh, step up and uh, match um, their cap capacities and capabilities. Large digital brands such as Google, Amazon, Apple, and Facebook, again, we see them as another um, threat to the um, existing infrastructure. They can leverage open banking APIs to offer financial services, but they will need open banking partners. Like these are not the companies who are in the banking business, but they have a lot of uh, data and a lot of financial muscle to be able to um, actually match up and become a threat, but they will definitely need some uh, banking partner to be able to um, uh, go through this and enter the finance market. And lenders now in this uh, landscape can participate in the new uh, digital open banking ecosystem, but they must be prepared for the regulatory changes that are coming in terms of opening the APIs. The data is not going to be just um, um, within the lenders anymore, so they have to open up their APIs because of the regulatory changes. So because of this, the lenders now at the same time kind of similar uh, to the digital brands, but on the other side of the um, this uh, situation, they won't have the digital muscle, so they would need um, open banking with trusted partners on the technology side. So it's an interesting uh, dynamics as we see it where uh, the fintechs and larger digital brands um, having certain advantages within the open data world, but then lenders are 
um, and the FIs are the companies who have the uh, network, they have the knowledge, they have the financial um, advantage, but they need the technological partners to be able to match up and enter the new world of uh, open data. This begs the question, are we ready for this transformation and in the uh, new world and the new landscape? So in terms of the readiness, what we can check um, are these different elements. Uh, do we know enough about our data? These are all the questions that all the FIs have to take into account um, in terms of their readiness and then um, go through the transformation. Um, again, data, as we said, uh, underwriting is a data intensive uh, business and we should know enough about our data, data about the customers, about the loans, and about the collateral as the three main entities within the platform and within this ecosystem. Our business and IT aligned on our goals and objectives in the organizational goals and objectives overall. Do we have the right business sponsor and transformation champion to be able to take us through that um, transformation journey for the digital? Can our internal resources deliver the product? Is it something that we can build or we have to um, work with other vendors, identify the right vendors who can deliver uh, the right product and uh, offering for us and work together um, to get there as a partnership. And there are uh, different vendors in the market, but the right vendor is the one who can cover the data needs and also be able to have an open um, workflow uh, to customize um, and fit the needs of the FI and organization. And obviously, if we know of someone in the industry, other um, lenders and other FIs that have gone through the same journey, what we can um, work with them to learn from um, their journey and optimize um, our uh, journey. So just to wrap up again, and I, I'll leave you with this, as I said, we should start with the data. As we said at the beginning of the presentation, underwriting and lending is a very data-driven practice. Um, and understanding our data needs and our um, current status and where we want to get to is the first step in this journey that we have to take into account. Um, and just remember that we can work with any system, but we have to pick the right system that fits our needs. So to summarize, um, we talked about the loan origination, going digital, the comparison between uh, the traditional way um, and lending paradigm versus the digital paradigm. We talked about the strategic decision-making drivers for adopting digital loan origination. We talked about designing a successful digital lending transformation. Um, we talked about the framework and how the different steps within the technological uh, journey would look like. And we talked about the disruption of FinTech and open banking on traditional lending and how to be ready uh, for this. I pass it over to Don uh, for the Q&A. Thank you, Arash. There's a lot of information to cover. Thinking back to that slide on traditional loan cycles, how Excel is being used throughout the process, I think many people would probably agree that Excel is many things, but it is not a loan origination or underwriting platform. No. Yeah. That's true. So before we leave this, before we, let's talk about this slide for 30 seconds. Um, in case our audience has a question before we get to our questions about who we are and what we do. So Blank Labs is a software innovation and consulting company. We specialize in digital lending for residential and commercial lines of business. And samples of our work include designing and building solutions for end-to-end -end commercial lending, mortgage service portals and renewal portals, uh, building enterprise integration strategies and solutions, and designing loan and decision data models and analytical solutions. Of course, we do things on, uh, on uh, mobile wallets, and um, we also do things on credit card merchant enhancement statements. Uh, moving to the questions now, um, if anybody wants to learn anything more about what we do in these areas, we welcome the discussions. But let's take our first question as we're being pressed for time now. Mm -hmm. And who do we have? Um, Leah in Michigan. Thank you for joining us today, Leah. Leah's question, Arash, is what is the impact of digital loan origination systems on traditional channels like brokers and in intermediaries? Um, good question, Don. I think uh, what we have uh, seen and experienced is that the smaller FIs 
are more uh, conservative in that sense. So um, they would not like to disrupt their existing uh, broker uh, channels and network. So what they do is that uh, they would uh, avoid that self-origination at this point, but there are larger banks who are more comfortable with this and are going for um, experimenting at least with uh, self-origination and other new channels. Uh, we see then even uh, using more uh, innovation in that sense in terms of maybe augmenting it with some new ways of uh, taking uh, credit scoring, for example, and using multiple new ways of doing credit scoring systems as an example. Okay. But then at the same time, I think open banking will change this landscape, as we mentioned, with the emergence of banking API. So, um, <clears throat> and the push from the um, younger, um, you know, segments of the market, like the millennials, millennials that are really asking for that kind of thing. So yes. they want to be able to directly um, self-originate their loans and be able to compare right. the yeah. rates yeah. directly. Okay. So smaller FIs are being cautious, larger FIs are experimenting, mm -hmm. and open banking is coming. All right, let's, um, let's go to Michelle in Ottawa. Thank you for being with us today, Michelle. She has a good question. She wants to talk about uh, transformation roadmap. Mm -hmm. That slide you had in yeah. your presentation. Um, so she asked, what have you seen as the primary objective of a digital loan system? Is it transformation or is it automation? That's a good question. I think usually uh, what happens is that uh, to our experience, companies start uh, really mainly uh, asking for automation. So uh, their objective is usually set for automation. And uh, once they go through the process, I mean, the idea of digitization, um, the idea of uh, that uh, transformation comes more and more to the picture. So really starts with a smaller step of, okay, let's first uh, digitize for the sake of automation or um, sake of uh, um, process uh, improvements and optimization. Yeah. And then after that, when we see the smaller benefits of this, then we go and see, okay, so what's the larger transformation stuff? So for example, in our experience, we worked with some companies that uh, really just wanted to bring that Excel-based way of doing things to a, a web-based system. Yeah. So very um, tactical and uh, incremental. And then once we go through them and work with them, we start then mapping all the digital journeys and uh, define all the new ways that the business can be done. So then the whole idea of transformation with the new workflows, a new way of doing things uh, in terms of digitally capturing all the data that is necessary, uploading the collateral work, calculating the risk, everything comes to the picture and the transformation becomes more and more paramount. Okay, good. Okay, I think we have time for one more question, Harash. Um, so let's go to James in the Boston area. Welcome, James, and thank you for your question. James would like to know what types of loan systems have you worked on, and in, in your experience, what is the biggest obstacle to implementing end-to-end -end lending solutions? Okay. So we have worked, as you mentioned, uh, uh, just at the beginning of the Q&A at Long Clubs, we have worked with a variety of um, financial services um, projects and work uh, that has been uh, on having mortgage services portal that we have developed for certain customers, complete end-to-end -end underwriting platforms that we have developed for others, digital income verification through connecting to um, the other uh, uh, banks and their websites and their um, portals. We have integrated uh, pretty much just modern user journeys uh, with the legacy book of record mm -hmm. systems as we mentioned uh, within the uh, slides and in the webinar. Um, loan servicing portal, uh, for internal agents, again, that's another important aspect that in, from an internal operations perspective, that's a, a very key aspect. And uh, pretty much uh, designing the whole uh, decisioning data um, using various data sources. So like we have done a lot of uh, different uh, work for uh, different FIs, um, more simpler um, to very complex projects and also just mostly on innovation consultancy side. So we have uh, done a lot of different stuff. In terms of uh, the um, challenges that we've seen, I guess it depends on the um, digitization, uh, the state of digitization within the FI um, and the technological maturity of the company. So these are the things that we have seen. Um, the integration with multiple systems, especially the legacy systems is paramount. Like this is one of the uh, major challenges always, but there's a science to it. Like, uh, you know, that uh, can be figured out, although it's a major undertaking anyway. Uh, culture is another challenge that is uh, more of an art. Yeah. So just going through that transformation, as I said, 
requires people, process, and technology, like all the different aspects to come together. Yeah. The people side of it, the new skills that we have to learn, the new way of doing things, the new process and workflows, that's another uh, ch uh, challenge and change management is a uh, important success, success factor there. So again, within that uh, journey and the uh, framework that I showed, it's a very important aspects of it yeah. um, to have the right governance and the right infrastructure uh, and processes in place. And then there's the um, data aggregation and data migration. Like these are also usually underestimated, but again, it's possible. Um, but again, it requires that understanding of the data structure and where we are and where we want to be. Uh, that's another important thing that have to be taken into account. So these are some of the major challenges that I have seen in all those different breadth and depth of different experiences and work that we have done. Okay. I think it's, it's important to have an experienced partner, right? Exactly. Somebody you can work with. Okay. All right. We uh, have run out of time, so we have to conclude our session today. Um, I'd like to ask our audience to please keep an eye on your inbox. Uh, look for our email with our um, our uh, survey, and we'd like to say thank you for attending and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much.